TK101, The Rock Station. We are backstage. We are at the Pensacola Civic Center. We are here with Johnny Christ, the bass player with Avenged Sevenfold. First of all, welcome to our stretch of the Gulf Coast. I know you've played in Biloxi a few times. Uh, you were booked to play in Mobile a couple of years back at the Bay Fest, and I'm not sure what the hitch was, but uh, you didn't make that show. But finally, you are here, and it's great to have you. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're excited to be here. It's going to be a great show, I think, tonight. Well, first of all, uh, congrats on the success of the Nightmare record. Um, uh, it's it's got to be a little bit bittersweet in, in light of what's happened, which we'll touch on in just a moment here. But it does seem like the band has kind of climbed a hurdle and are really at this point becoming a, a super group. And I want to ask you about the band's transition from being you know a warped tour style metalcore band to being an almost old school metal outfit. Was this the 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 band in the mid 2000s growing into your sound or was it a move calculated to get the band in, in front of more people because i mean it, it's really paid off you guys are almost sold out here tonight yeah you know i think it's it's really been a evolutionary process for us you know i mean we've always just wanted to do something different on every record and um you know we kind of wear a lot of our influences on our sleeves and i think that's kind of where you know the the sound is, has gone um we've you know, we've always wanted to be, um, you know, a big rock band that, you know, can can do anything, basically. And uh, um, over the time, I think we've been able to do that since Warp Tour. You know, we had a couple records out when we had, had done uh, Warp Tour. And um, and now it's just kind of, you know, it's just kind of a natural evolution of what we wanted to accomplish as a band, the, the kind of albums we wanted to put out. It, wasn't, it was never necessarily a conscious effort to, you know, we need this so we could get more people in front of us or something like that. It's never that. It's just, you know, keep making records that we like to listen to and probably the fans will like listening to them too. Johnny Christ, Ben Sevenfold here with us on TK101.com. We're going to be excerpting this interview as well on the TK101 Shark Attack. So on, on various video outlets, including TK101.com, there is a video. It's made its debut today uh, for the current single, So Far Away. And while there's there's no doubt about what the song is about, uh, this is one of those videos that, that really moves you. It's a tribute to the late drummer, uh, Jimmy, the Rev Sullivan. Uh, it's um, a very simple slideshow showing his life and times and really the life and, and times of the band um i mean you know these guys, you guys go back you know since high school uh, people have different ways of dealing with loss you know some want to move on uh, and kind of keep the grief in and what you guys are doing in this video is kind of laying it all out there and um it comes off as just a wonderful tribute to a friend but it could not have been easy to put together how hands-on were, were, was 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 the band and putting this this tribute together um you know we just came up with a concept for it you know and then uh it was a one-day shoot uh, we came in and we did our performance part we we got to meet with some of the uh kids the actor kids that were playing like the our likenesses in in the in the uh, video and um you know actually watching it and, and having the editing and everything put together i mean this was really probably the first time we got like uh, our very first edit from the video and it ended up being like exactly what we wanted and um it's been it, it's just a it's a video that was very hard to watch the first time for us and you know we're, we're really proud of it and uh i mean you said it right it's just it's a tribute you know to to our brother it was in uh, december of 09 that we learned of the revs passing was there any consideration uh, in the band of calling it a day because it's it, it i mean i was almost shocked you know it was it didn't seem like long after that that we heard that you guys were in a studio plugging away on on eventually what would become the the nightmare album yeah you know it was absolutely the first initial thought was you know how can we continue without him you know obviously it's a huge part of the band it always has been and you know but more importantly, it's just a huge part of our lives. So, you know, the, we didn't think initially about the band. It was it was never an issue. But then, you know, a week passes and we have to bring it up. You know, are we going to do anything? And all of us, I mean, originally I was like, I don't, I don't think I can do it. You know, there's just no way. And um, without the um, support of our fans and the support of Jimmy's family, I don't think we would be doing what we're doing right now. We had a record that we'd completely written. I mean, it was 100% ready to go. And I think that's why um, it was kind of a quick decision. We wanted to kind of have this emotion that we were going through on the record. And um, luckily, we had a record that we wrote 100% with Jimmy. He had put his seal of approval on it, if you will, you know, and we were ready to go in the studio a week before, I mean, like, literally, like, it was going to be the next week. Um, and then he passed. So, I mean, for us, it was just... It was uh, really had no choice at that point. 
Uh, and at that point, you had to know you were sitting on some great music. I mean, look how things have turned out with the record. And then you had to find a drummer with the the technical standard, you know, that the Rev set. You talk to any rock drummer, they bring his name up. You know, everything from you know, a, you know, big names to you know, kids playing in the, in their basements. Um, you you found Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater uh, to at least work on the record, and you worked with him through the year, played some shows. Well, the arrangement with him was that always, you know, intended to be temporary, or did you think you had a, a drummer when he came on board? What happened with that? No, it was always meant to be temporary. You know, Mike Pornoy is Mike Pornoy. He has his thing with Dream Theater. You know, that that ended up going how it went with, and that was totally his side of, you know, that's not part of our lives. But, you know, it was always going to be a temporary thing. The plan was always to, you know, he was gracious enough to help us get back on our feet and touring again, you know. And uh, I think that was that was a huge step. That was something that we needed. It's kind of a, a baseboard into getting us back into it because obviously the first – long time and still sometimes when you look back at the drum kit now on stage it's it's very difficult for us but um overall it's it was it was always meant to be a temporary thing and we did what we were going to do we finished out the year with him and then you know we, we he went about his way and we went about ours well tell us about who's behind the skins who are we going to see tonight uh drumming with event sevenfold we got this awesome youngster <laughs> aaron he's uh he's a he's a sweet kid he's been out with us since january um, he's just excited and he's just a hell of a drummer, man. He's really good and, uh, he's, he's fitting in pretty well. Was it an audition process? Uh, did you guys, you know, just bring guys in and jam with them and just see who felt right? Or did, did you have your eye on some people? No, we, we had a very small audition process, very small, just literally three drummers came in on, on a very down, down on the low key, uh, kind of deal. And, uh, he was the one that, you know, knew all the parts and played very well, and just it, it was a good fit. You know, it felt good to be playing with him, and uh, I think that's been uh, the case ever since January when we've been having him out on the shows. Oh, this is very cool. We are with Johnny Christ, and and if you're just getting home from the concert tonight, I'm uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna say it's probably been a pretty kick-ass show. Uh, these guys are getting ready to hit the stage, and um, one of the hallmarks of Avenged Sevenfold is maybe some of the theatrical touches that you that you hear on the songs. You know, I remember the first time hearing the the album version of Nightmare with the the xylophone sounding, you know, effects. I mean, it comes across as some sort of menacing movie soundtrack. Does that translate into the live show? And for fans like me that have never seen you guys, what what can we expect tonight? What do you guys uh, you know bring to the the live show? Because you know we're hearing things that it's you know man, this is old. This is just like an old school metal show. <laughs> well, that's absolutely right. We have a lot of influences from you know Metallica and Iron Maiden live shows that we've just grown up loving. And, uh, you know, I think you could expect something that's it's just a lot of fun. You know, we like to have fun with the, with the crowd and everything like that and blow some stuff up along the way. And uh, as far as the theatrics go, they're still there. We're 100 percent there. We run we run a little uh, Pro Tools rig for some stuff. And actually, if you're if you're out there, you'll, you'll hear um, some excerpts ab- from uh, from Jimmy that we get that we kept uh, some vocal lines that he would sing live. And quite frankly, the rest of it, there's no one else in the band who can do it. So, he, so he kept his tapes, and uh, you know, and, and it's it's a way that we get to uh, another, another another small way we get to keep tribute and keep him alive in the performance. You know, and that's the thing, keeping your friend's memory alive. We've all lost people, and um, you know, so you know, like I said before, you know, some people like to shelve that stuff and compartmentalize things, but um, I I think it's very cool, you know, that you guys, are, you know, the outpouring from the fans after that happened, um, and the and the fact that you know you still are keeping him a part of the band, um, you know, in light of what's happened, I think that's just awesome. Johnny Christ, Avenge Sevenfold. Uh, you can find this again here at TK101.com. We're going to be playing excerpts from this uh, tomorrow on the TK101 Shark Attack as we wrap up uh, what's uh, going to be a great night of music. You guys are getting ready to hit the stage. So I, I know you got to get to it, but very cool to meet you. Johnny Christ from Avenge Sevenfold. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us. All the best to you and safe travels. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man.